I'm going to show you how to calculate work, at least as far as how we define work in physics, right? So, so work is a force times a distance, okay? In fact, we can write the formula just work equals FD like this, right? And so what that means is that if I exert, I mean, this is the simplest example, right? Let's suppose I exert uh, uh, 8 newtons of force, right? And I slide this thing maybe 6 meters, right? Okay, the force is 8 newtons and 6 meters, and that's 48 newton meters, right? Or it's, uh, you can write it 48 joules, right? Or if you, if you really want to, you can say 48, well, that was a crazy 8, okay? J like that, okay? Wow, that 8 just got inspired, okay? So, so um, these are our options here, okay? And this is what we ordinarily are going to do. Um, and then the question is, you know, okay, how is that a transfer of energy? Well, I slid this box. Probably I get tired doing that. If I did that all day, I would use up energy that I had. Um, and this, I guess it would be going to heat. The floor would sort of get hot like that. Okay. So um, that's, that's one concept, right? And then uh, let's just do a, a, a joule. One joule then, right, is a newton meter. Right, which is, if you remember what a newton is, that's a kilogram meter per second squared times a meter, right? So really a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared, if you really wanted to know, okay? Um, and that's the simple uh, version of work, and most of the time it's just like that, okay? Uh, but let's look at something that's a little more complicated, right? There's, sometimes there's an angle that comes into it. So if we dragged a box or sled, and by the way, this this PowerPoint won me like PowerPoint of the year in, in 2002, okay? But but uh, if we drag that sled at some force that's not exactly in the direction it moved, the sled moved along the level like this, right? Okay, but uh, we exerted a force that was up at, a, at an angle, right? That force, that's the hypotenuse, right? Um, notice that, it, that, that this force has two components. Right, the opposite side and the adjacent side. It's the adjacent side that did the work. The opposite side, assuming the box didn't leave the surface, did no work. So we just ignore that and we use only the adjacent side. This is the important component, right? And the adjacent side is F cos theta, right? And that's where we get this formula. Okay? Um, and when you go to college, they're going to write this work equals F dot d right and dot just means a vector dot product which is incorporates the cosine okay so that's the most complicated that it can get now there are some tricky bits so let me just show you this okay um, tricky bit number one is well this is actually the non-tricky bit okay most of the time the force is in the direction of the um of the motion like for example if i lift a box at a constant speed right i exert a force up and it displaces itself upward, right? The force is up, the, the distance is up, and the angle between them is zero. The cosine of zero is one. And so basically the cos drops out of the formula, right? Okay, uh, but sometimes we actually do the opposite. Now, by the way, remember how we talked about work was a transfer of energy? If I take this box and I lift it up and it's here, right, okay? It has energy. This has, actually has something called potential energy when it's up in the air. So, so in that case, you can actually see it's a directly a transfer of energy. I, I become less energetic, the box becomes more. Now, let's do the opposite. Let's take the box and let's displace it downward. So our displacement is downward. Now, if I lower it at a constant speed, I still have to exert a force up on it. Right? I'm not, if, I, if I exert a force down on it, I'm actually spiking it into the ground. Right? So, so I'm lowering it at a constant speed, so I exert a force up on it. The angle between up and down is 180. Right? So this is actually negative one. This is negative work. This is positive work. I give energy to the box. If I take energy from the box, it's negative work. Right? So if I take it from up high and bring it down low, I'm transferring negative energy to the box. I'm taking energy from the box. Right? And then finally, the final little tricky bit is that if I try to lift the box, but it's too heavy, I can't lift it, right? And I'm just sitting there trying to lift it, but it doesn't lift. In other words, if, if D is zero, right, then work equals zero. Even though I might get tired trying to lift it, 
in the physics sense of this, that, that we define work as a transfer of energy, I have not transferred any energy, energy to the box, therefore I've done no work, okay? Um, okay, so, so let's do some examples. I've already done one example, and it was very simple, but here's, you know, full-fledged example, right? Okay, so uh, here's the ground, and we, we uh, apparently it slopes away, right? Here's the sled, and uh, I've got to draw a good sled here, right? I'm picturing the flexible flyer, right? And uh, we exert a force, and that force is at an angle of, what, 32 degrees? And then we displace, the displacement is 12 and a half meters. This is 13.2 newtons. It's a very light sled, wow. Okay, it should be a little bit more in force, right? Um, this is just a, a work, is FD cos theta. Okay, so that's going to be 13.2 times 12.5 times cos of 32, right? So I can bust that out. I'm gonna check my calculator. I'm gonna go mode, yeah, I am in degrees. Okay, so 13.2 uh, times 12.5 times cos 32. I got 139.927. Now, you know, we only have about a couple digits, three digits there, right? So we could say 139.9 or 140, right? So that's, you know, one difficult example. Let's do another difficult example. Okay, so Joe Daddy. Now here, these are all the things, by the way, that you can know about these things. Okay, um, and uh, let's see, it's five kilograms, so that must be the mass, right? 2.5 meters must be the distance, right? And what work does he do, right? So this is what we want to find, okay? Well, we can do this pretty easily. Let's see, let's look at this. Uh, I, I believe we are lifting, right? So the force here is gonna be the weight of the object, mg. So step one, let's find the force, right? So that's five times 9.8, that's 49 Newtons, right? So now we can fill this in, right? That's 49 Newtons. And now we've got a formula here that'll work to get the force, right? The force, it's force times distance. So work is force times distance. So it's 49 times uh, 2.5 meters, right? Newtons, if I put the one unit in, I gotta put both in, right? And that's uh, da, 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 49 times, uh, what is it, 2.5? That's 122.5, right? That's my answer. And that's jowls of work, right? Okay, let's do one more example with friction because friction could be a force, right? Okay, so here we are, uh, Herman Lefter, no, Herman, Herman Lefter, drags a 150 kilogram sled, so that must be the mass, right? Okay, 45 meters across a lake, that must be the distance, right? Coefficient of friction is 0.12. We are definitely dragging this thing, right? So our force, is mu times m times g, right? So it's 0.12 times 150 times 9.8. 0.12 times 150 times 9.8, 176.4. Right, and then of course we now we can use this guy, right? Force times distance, right? So work is force times distance, so it's uh, 176.4 newtons to drag it, right? And then how far did we drag it? 45 meters, right? Okay, so times 45, so 7938 joules. Now we only have a couple digits really, so I guess we'd have to maybe round to 7900, but I'm happy leaving it like that.